The frame of this racing bike weighs just over half a kilogram. For a world-class racer, a lighter bike means a faster ride. Every gram of weight on the bike, even every drop of paint, can be working for or against you when fractions of a second count most. The secret to the bike's ultra-light weight and superior speed can be found in these paper-thin rolls of carbon fibre. These are made into a composite known to racers as Optimum Compaction Low Void Carbon, or OCLV for short. Initially, the carbon fibre is floppy and flexible. It's almost like a thick fabric. But after it's heated and pressed together, it hardens into the composite that's lighter than aluminium and stronger than steel. But first it has to be cut into the individual pieces that make the frame. So the sheets of carbon fibre are placed in a computer-controlled cutting machine. This works like a high-tech biscuit cutter. A programme guides the cutting blade, which is tucked between two small wheels like a tiny chariot. The blade is made of the same carbon as the carbon fibre of the bike frame. However, iron is added, making it even stronger so it can punch through the fibre. Next, an aluminium mould is used to press the thin pieces of carbon fibre together to become the ultra-light composite tubing which makes the bike frame. Several pieces of the carbon fibre are layered into each mould to make the tube super strong. The tube's hollow shape is created by a balloon-like bladder that inflates between the carbon pieces while they're in the mould. When everything is in place, the mould clamps together and slides into a pressure cooker to be heated and pressed. 22 tonnes of pressure bears down on the moulds while the outer plates heat up to 120 degrees to melt the pieces of carbon fibre together. At the same time, the bladder inflates inside the mould so that the pieces of carbon fibre don't collapse in on themselves. And after just 30 minutes of heated pressure, the carbon sheets emerge as the composite parts. The pieces cool for an hour before they're glued together with a special lightweight glue. To enhance the frame's aerodynamics, it's off to the finishing room. Small circular sanders smooth down the rough edges that could cost a cyclist precious seconds. It takes the human eye and touch to detect the smallest of imperfections. The frames are then prepared for the next process by being washed. This is to remove all the accumulated dust. Next, it's onto the paint shop to be sprayed with an ultra-light paint. Pneumatic hoses spray on the paint. This ensures it goes on in a thin, even layer so that there are no globs to weigh down the bike. Even the paint is low density, so there's no extra weight to slow down the rider. But the bike still needs a clear finish coat to protect the paint. And because every drop slows down the aerodynamic frame, it's applied in an ultra-thin coat by robots. We ask them to stop the spraying for a few minutes so you can see how the motion of the robots evenly coats the frames. An even coat is important so there's nothing to drag the wind and slow down the bike. But no frame design gets a green light without passing the stress test. This is the fatigue test machine. Pneumatic cylinders shake, rattle and roll the frame to test the strength of the joints with 110 kilograms of pressure on each pedal stroke. If there's just one crack in the frame, it's junked. The frames that pass are equipped for world-class competition. Going on first are the sprockets that hold the chains and shift the gears. This is followed by the forks that hold the front wheel. Finally, it's the handlebars. The bike is delivered with its wheels and other parts in a box because the rest of the assembly is done by the racer. 
A carbon fiber bike frame is light and super strong, and it could make the difference in the most demanding professional road races where every fraction of a second counts.